today we're going to make this beautiful poppy. It's a wet felted flower and I'm making a poppy because it's Remembrance Sunday next month. But if you'd like to make some other type of flower, you can use any colours that you want. And as long as you've got a, a contrasting colour for the middle, um, you can make some lovely spring flowers or summer flowers. It's up to you. But here we are. This is my poppy. So the materials that we're going to use, the woolen fibres, I've got some scarlet red merino here and some poppy red I've got some ruby red merino some forest green and some raven black merino and then for the effect fibres to add a bit of texture and shine to it I've got some red mulberry silk you can see how that shines against the wool Got a little bit of um, red and cerise pink sari silk here and it's got some little bits of blue in it as well I don't know if you can see and I've also got um, some red angelina fibre which I'm going to add for some sparkle and then for the centre of the flower I'm going to make a felt ball I'm going to decorate it with these little um, seed beads and on the back going to add um, a brooch pin so that you can attach it to um, either a jumper or a handbag or a hat, anything really. You could even put it as um, decoration in your home. So as usual I'm going to start with my bamboo mat. So I've just got a small bamboo mat and on top I've put some bubble wrap. Now for the background of the flower I'm going to start with this green. So I'm just going to take some of this out and I'm going to make a square shape first in one direction doesn't need to be too big Put more over there that's it so that's one direction and some green in the other direction as well. So I'm getting a square shape there. Doing it in two layers in different directions to give it strength. So there we are. It's just a relatively small patch of green. And I'll just show you how big it is. So that's 12 centimetres. I'm just going to push it in a little bit to make it more square. There we are. So if you do it 12 centimetres across and 12 centimetres the other way as well. Or near enough, you don't need to be too exact. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this scarlet merino wool and all I'm going to do is just do the same. I'm going to do it like a cartwheel, going all the way around. Now because we've got the green crisscrossed on the back, that's going to give it strength and this is going to be quite wispy. So you see I'm doing it in a circular shape here, just building it up as I go. So this is merino wool. Again, it's a lovely fine wool that's nice and straight and it lays flat, so it's nice for these flowers. Now this flower that I'm making, it's going to be a brooch, but your flowers could decorate handbags or just general decoration. And I'm going to put um, a little brooch pin on the back of this one. So there we are. That's the first layer of my flower. Now I'm going to put the petals on. So I want to have a mixture of these um, different colours. So this is actually called poppy red, but I prefer the scarlet for poppies. So there we are, just doing it again in a circular shape. I'm t twisting these slightly because I'm going to put a few different colours on here. Just to give the centre of the flower. Because when it's 
creating it's going to be ruched up so you're not really going to see the individual petals it's going to be more of an abstract poppy so you can see the slight contrast between the two colors here very very quick i'm not taking um too much care over this so there we are this will go us and this is my ruby red i'm just going to put a little bit on here just to add it a little bit of color there's not too much going on again in this star shape for the petals So you don't have to use red, you could use pinks or yellows or oranges, it doesn't really matter. All depends on what's the colour scheme you want to go for. Put a little bit more over here, I think. So eventually we're going to have a really nice black middle to the flower. You can see already you're starting to get quite a nice shape here. So I'm going to put on some of the mulberry silk. Now this will give us a lovely shine. Look at what a contrast that is. Contrasting colour and the texture of it as well. And this won't lay flat when it's um, felted either. So just decide what it wants to do. Can you see that lovely shine that we've got on there? Finally, we're going to put on the sari silk as well. There we are. You'll see again, you've got your centre. So you've got all these layers coming out from it. I hope that this works with the sari silk. It's not too much of a contrast. I'm just laying it on. I think that'll be all right. There we go. Now keeping this one quite light so we're going to see the fibres. It would work just as well with just merino wool if that's what you've got. But I'm, I'm quite lucky. I've got lots of woolen fibres here that I can experiment with. There we are. So I've got a, a bit of a pink centre for my flower, but I like that. And finally, I've got my um, Angelina fibre. And what I'm going to do is just cut some little bits so we've got a, a bit of sparkle in the middle here I'm not laying it on in strands because I do find that Angelina fibre likes to come off so I've just got almost like a glitter of it there so that's the flower before it's felted and then what we're going to do is just put on I'll get ready a piece of um, bubble wrap and I think you've seen me use this before it's my sprayer and in it, I've got a, a solution of soap flakes and water. So it's going to spray it all over. It's quite nice because it doesn't wet your piece of work too much. And it doesn't move things around too much either. Anyway, I'm just giving it a good wet. Now, the middle is a lot thicker than the edges, so I'm going to put some more on there. around the edges a little bit more I might put some more on afterwards as well you can see the soap on there right I'm going to put on a bubble wrap and so I don't move the petals too much I'm just going to be very very gentle and just pressing them out you can see just having a quick look at the size that we've got here so going from the edges, the finished flower there in the just the merino is 21, but that will shrink a little bit when we um, when we felt it. So we can't see the green that's on the back. We can just see the red of the flower. So 
what you can do as well as you've got two pieces of bubble wrap all you need to do is just flick it over continue on the other side now what i'm going to do is going to peel it off carefully and i knew i hadn't gone all the way through with the um the solution so i'm just going to spray a little bit more on here in the middle There we go, a little bit more on the edges. So that's that's quite well soaked, but it's not pouring everywhere. And put the bubble wrap over the top and smoothing it. Now I'm going to continue smoothing like this on both sides for about 10 minutes. So I've been smoothing the flour for about 10 minutes. We're just going to have a little look at the back and you'll see there how much it's flattened out. You can see the original um, green square that we put on and then the, the very fluffy petals around the edge. Now, I'll be able to move it easily on the bubble wrap. And I'm just going to flip it over and we'll have a look at the front. Now, look at that. What I like about it is the colours of the sari silk that are showing through. You can see those little bits of blue, which are just a small enough amount that they're not going to detract from the colour of the poppy. But I can see straight away that there's quite a lot of fluffy bits in there, which shows me it's definitely not felted yet. So we're going to be a little bit rougher with it now. So I'm going to put on the bubble wrap on the top again. And I've got the pipe insulation that I like to use for rolling felt. If you don't have that, just roll up a little bit of the bubble wrap to begin with. So you've got a, a tube of bubble wrap. Then go over the top and continue rolling like that until you get to the end. But I do find that the pipe insulation is nice because you help it stays rolled easier. And also the flour won't be as tightly rolled together. So it does help things a little bit. So we're going to roll it up there. Right to the end. So it's quite a tight roll that I've got there. Um, what some people do is they put an elastic bands round and just roll it as it is or um, an old pair of tights is quite good to wrap around as well. But I like to use my towel because it keeps it nice and then you can open it up easily again. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it 50 rolls in four directions. So we roll it in quite long rolls like one, two, three, four. And then when I've got to the 50, you would open it up. There we go. There's the flower. And then give the flower a quarter turn. Put the pipe insulation back on. Roll it up. And then give it another 50 rolls in the towel. So you're going to do that in four different directions. So you've got a total of 200 rolls. And then we'll have a look to see if the fulling process has happened. Now the fulling process is where those lovely loose fibres of the wool knit together and it becomes a felt. So your your loose fibred flower will then become a fabric and it can be quite a delicate fabric. So let's get on with that. Now the flower has had its 200 rolls and I've had a look and just check the back and actually the fibres are still moving around which shows it's not quite ready yet, it needs some more time. So what I'm going to do is be a little bit rougher still, put the flower directly onto the bamboo mat. I'm just going to put that over the top, the bubble wrap. I'm going to continue, I think I'll give it 20 rolls in each direction now and see if it's going to be ready after that. Right, I've given the extra rolls, I can tell that's much better now. So just running my finger over the top, it's not moving around. And on this side, the merino is felted nicely. Um, the mulberry silk is still lifted a little bit, but that doesn't matter because I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, we're going to give it a rinse, but when we come back, what we're going to do is we are going to tie the bottom like that on, with a tie here and open the, open the petals out. And you'll see that it doesn't matter if the mulberry silk's lifting a little bit um, because they're still going to be attached. 
and then eventually we're going to put a black uh, felt ball in the middle. So the thing you're going to do now is just go along to a sink and give your flour a little rinse just to get rid of that excess soap that's in there. So I've rinsed the flour and I've squeezed as much water out as I can and now I'm just going to put the towel over the top and just pat it to get rid of any excess water that's in there. There we are, so it's relatively dry. And so what I'm going to do is just put your finger in the middle. And so you've found your central place there. That's that like that. You see, so you've just arranged your petals slightly. And then on the back, a bit like, oh, it looks like a, a skirt now, doesn't it? Um, we're going to just tie a little bit of thread. Now, I've got some green wool here, but it could be embroidery thread. It could be any colour. It doesn't matter because um, this is going to come off. It's just here so that it dries in this position with all the folds. So I'm going to tie it as tight as I can. So pretty tightly. There we are. Let's see how tight that is. Maybe a bit of Angelina fibre there. There we go. And just tie it off to just a simple knot. There, so you can see that's tied. I'm just going to snip the ends off. And I'm going to put it on the radiator. I'm just going to let it dry in this position. So you can see these folds that are here. As it dries, a bit like when you've got rollers in your hair, it'll, it'll retain the shape. So look at all those lovely folds of the poppy there. Can you see? So that'll retain that shape. And what you can do, you can even like just pull them apart slightly so you've got these lovely individual petals. So I'm going to leave that. You could leave it overnight or you could even um, just go over it with a hairdryer if you're in a hurry. All right, so if you'd like to go off and do that, please. Right, my flower's completely dry now. So... What we're going to do is we're going to make the centre of the flower, which is going to be a black felt ball. So I've got my black merino and some warm water, which has got some um, liquid detergent and some washing up liquid. So what we're going to do is just take a little piece of the black, tear it off. So we've just got a little piece there and I'm going to roll it up like a snowball just tucking the edges in there we go so I've rolled it one way I'm just going to get a little bit more to secure it to roll the other way as well so I've got some more of the black merino yeah like a snowball just going to roll it the other way as well There it is. It's very dry at the moment. So I'm just going to dip it into the water, let it soak up some of the water. And what I'm going to do is just roll it a bit like rolling plasticine. So you're going to continue doing this until you feel that the, the woolen fibres have stuck together and it should be quite dense. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't squash when you pinch it. So just keep going. Can you see already? I've started getting um, a black felt ball there. It's still quite wispy. So just keep going like that until you feel that it's quite a solid ball. Now, I've rolled the ball for about five minutes and it's definitely a lot dense, so it's not really giving much when I squeeze it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the centre of the flower. There, something like that. And... Just pull the petals round a little bit and here I've got um, some needle and thread already threaded with a knot on the end. And starting in the middle where the knot won't show, I am just going to sew the ball into the flower. So just catching it on the side. Actually, 
I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight the way through. So I've gone right the way through the felt ball, right the way through the flower. I'm going to do that all the way around so these petals keep their shape around the ball. Just watch your fingers when you do it. So you can see those two sides have caught now. I'm just going to try and catch these two as well. Let's go into that side. Here we are, look. So that this ball is so secure in the middle of the flower. It's not going to fall out. If you don't like sewing, then you could use a glue gun for this. It might be easier if you're doing it with children. So I'm going to go in on this final side here. I'm just keeping all the folds that I've got. And you can see, and there we are, there's the centre of the flower. So just keep going until you feel that it's secure. And then you can finish off with the sewing. And then it's time to um, sew the beads into the middle. There we are. I gave my, my flower a few more stitches so that the centre is nice and secure and you can't see the stitching. And at the back, it's pretty much invisible as well. So what I've got are these lovely little, they're called seed beads. I don't know if you can see them there. And they're nice and black and shiny. And then again, that'll give more texture to my uh, flower. So I've brought out the thread at the front of the flower. And I'm just going to thread on one of these little beads. I don't know whether you can see that there, but it's just shining beautifully. So I'm just going to catch it on and come up a different part of the flower and pull it tight. So there, it's just caught on there. I'm going to put another little bead on my thread. Ooh, look at that. I can thread it again. It's annoying when that happens. If it was double thread, it wouldn't. There we go. Luckily, it's quite a, a big eye on the needle. There we go. So I'm just going to put it in. I wouldn't be too regular with this. I'd be quite random with the with the pattern of the beads. There we are. So I've just gone in there. Come back up through it. There we are, there's another one. And keep going, threading on your beads until you're happy with the number that you've got on there. Now my flower's finished. I've sewn on some beads. There we are, quite a, a random selection. And on the back, I've sewn on a brooch pin. So it's ready to wear on a, a woolen coat or a nice chunky jumper. Remember, you can make different colours of flowers, which are great on um, handbags or hats or anything like that. But that'll look that'll look lovely. I'm pleased with that. I hope yours have turned out well too.